Have you ever stopped to think if charging an electric car as fast as possible is really the best idea? Well, this is a question that has been growing along with the popularization of electric vehicles. Could it be that we're charging our electric cars the wrong way? In the next few minutes, you'll understand why ultra-fast charging, so desired by many drivers, may not be the ideal solution. We'll see how this habit affects batteries, burdens the electrical grid, and can ultimately cost more. Electric cars have existed for more than 100 years, but only now are they becoming increasingly popular thanks to advances in batteries and growing concern about pollution and climate change. Automakers and governments are investing heavily to make these vehicles more accessible, and charging infrastructure has been expanding. However, the question raised is, does bringing the fossil fuel mindset, filling the tank quickly and driving off, make sense for electric vehicles? When we apply the gas station model to a battery-dependent car, we encounter cell degradation, grid demand spikes, and even high costs for consumers. Now, before anything else, we need to explain how ultra-fast charging works. In other words, it is a charging technology for electric vehicles that uses very high power, allowing the car's battery to be recharged in an extremely short time. At stations of this type, it is possible to reach up to 80% charge in about 15 minutes, depending on the vehicle model and station capacity, compared to one to two hours for fast charging and six to 12 hours for slow charging. This speed is only possible because charging is done in direct current and requires an advanced thermal management system in the car to prevent overheating. Not all vehicles are compatible with this type of charging, but most modern models are already equipped to take advantage of it. Fast charging has become synonymous with convenience, but there are important side effects. Number one, battery degradation. Lithium ion batteries do not react well to sustained high currents because the heat generated accelerates chemical reactions that wear down the cells. As a result, the battery loses capacity sooner forcing you to replace the pack or live with reduced range. Two, grid overload. Demand spikes are dangerous for grid stability. If thousands of cars request fast charging at the same time, power shortages may occur, or at minimum, electricity bills will rise significantly. Utilities must invest in robust infrastructure to support these peaks, costs that are usually passed on to all consumers. Number three, Installation and maintenance costs. Ultra-fast stations are expensive because they require powerful transformers, thick cables, and cooling systems. In the end, charging becomes more expensive for the user or relies on heavy subsidies. Therefore, it's worth asking, is it really worthwhile to focus on ever faster charging instead of distributing moderate power charging points that put less strain on the grid and batteries? There are three main charging modes, slow charging, fast charging, and ultra-fast charging. The latter capable of replicating the refueling experience because it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. The mistake is trying to excessively replicate the instant refueling common in combustion cars, ignoring the peculiarities and limitations of batteries in the grid. Stay with me because now we'll discuss some fundamental aspects brought by experts regarding the constant pursuit of reaching 100% charge in just 15 minutes. Here are four points. Number one, charging as part of daily life. Unlike combustion cars, you can charge an electric car every night at home or during the day in your workplace parking lot. There's no need to wait until the battery is nearly empty to fill it all at once. Two, mitigating demand peaks. If each driver charges at staggered times or during off-peak hours, the grid would avoid overloads. This can also be mitigated by special tariffs and smart management systems that help distribute energy usage. Number three, with less heat and fewer peak currents, battery lifespan is prolonged. In the long run, this saves money and reduces the need to buy new batteries or prematurely discard them. Number four, expand low and medium power infrastructure instead of concentrating resources on ultra-fast stations. This approach gradually creates the habit of leaving the car parked for hours while charging. It's important to note that overloading the electrical grid can be dangerous. Our power system was not designed to handle multiple ultra-charging stations simultaneously. Even in countries with advanced infrastructure, meeting massive demand spikes can cause voltage drops or blackouts, stretching the grid beyond its limits and raising electricity costs because utilities must reinforce transmission lines, substations, and transformers. The alternative would be a distributed charging network. The idea is for each user to charge gradually at different times using smart systems that communicate the optimal moment to draw more or less energy. This smooths demand over the day and night. But let's be honest, 
That is somewhat utopian and difficult to implement. Therefore, the closest thing we have today is home charging. If you live in a house or a building with a garage, you already have a big advantage, residential charging. This is the simplest and cheapest scenario because if your car sits parked for eight hours, you can charge it slowly without queues, hurry, or overheating the battery. Of course, this requires planning since older buildings may need upgrades. And it's important for the condominium manager or Y utility to authorize charger installation. But if everything is well planned, this method minimizes the mistake of being obsessed with fast charging all the time. Extending the residential charging concept, it would make sense to install charging points in places where cars remain parked for long periods, supermarket lots, shopping malls, and company parking. While you shop or work, your car recharges smoothly and efficiently avoiding systematic use of ultra-fast stations. The big idea here is to distribute infrastructure, making charging part of everyday life rather than a punctual, urgent event. And fast chargers, do they still have a place? With all this said, it's not that fast chargers are useless or villains. On the contrary, they serve a crucial role in certain contexts. Number one, long distance travel. Highways and rest stops need higher power chargers to ensure mobility between cities. Two, emergency situations. If you forget to charge and need to leave suddenly, having access to a fast charger in the city can prevent setbacks. The point is, it doesn't make sense to use ultra fast charging all the time. It should be a targeted tool as it incurs high costs and subjects the battery to greater wear. The best path seems to be a hybrid model in which slow charging dominates daily use and fast charging is an occasional exception. Even while we rethink habits, some technologies can improve the experience. Number one, solid state batteries, which are safer, have higher energy density and are potentially more tolerant of fast charging. However, they are still in development and expected to scale in the coming years. Two, wireless charging, which works by parking the car over a pad and charging without plugging in cable. The convenience is significant, although cost and efficiency remain challenges. Number three, battery swapping, which involves exchanging a depleted battery for a fully charged one in minutes. This model works for taxi fleets or in regions with strong battery standardization, such as parts of China. Number four, smart charging plus V2G, intelligent systems that schedule charging for cheaper times and even use the car's battery as a power source for the grid during demand peaks. This transforms the electric car into an active part of the grid, generating savings and stability. All these innovations coupled with a cultural shift can revolutionize how we think about vehicle refueling. The purpose of owning an electric car is usually to reduce CO2 emissions, right? But that only makes sense if the energy powering the vehicle comes from clean or predominantly clean sources. If electricity is generated by coal plants, emission reductions aren't as significant as imagined. Countries with strong hydro, wind, or solar bases make EVs far more sustainable overall. To leverage solar or wind production peaks and use them at night, we need stationary batteries or other storage technology. This better aligns renewable energy supply with vehicle charging demand. In other words, an EV's sustainability depends not only on charging speed, but also on where and how the energy is generated and stored. Some regions have already realized that relying solely on ultra-fast charging isn't enough. Norway, leader in EV adoption, encourages home and low-power charging in condos. Fast chargers exist, but most drivers charge at home. Germany tests streetlight chargers and offers variable tariffs to shift charging off-peak. China combines widespread fast charging with battery swapping, yet many still prefer slow home charging overnight. These examples show multiple paths, all seeking a balance between convenience and sustainability. Even knowing that slow or distributed charging makes sense, barriers remain. Number one, lack of information. Many owners are unaware of fast charging's impact on battery lifespan. The instant fill-up culture stems from combustion cars, and changing that habit is difficult. Two, legislation and regulation. Not all jurisdictions make installing chargers in buildings or parking lots easy. Bureaucratic hurdles, lack of incentives, and connector fragmentation persist. Number three, initial cost. Upgrading a condominium's electrical system or installing a private charger requires investment. EV energy pricing also varies widely. Number four, insufficient public infrastructure. Many cities still lack enough charging points, creating anxiety and reinforcing reliance on ultra-fast stations as an emergency exit. Despite these challenges, global trends and market forces point to distributed, intelligent charging as the most viable and economical long-term strategy. So how do you charge right instead of charge wrong? Here are practical tips. Number one, 
Gradual daily charging. Whenever possible, charge slowly, at home or at lower power stations, 7 kilowatts, 11 kilowatts, etc. This preserves battery health and eases grid demand. Two, occasional use of ultra charging, reserve fast stations for long trips or emergencies. Higher cost is justified in specific situations. Three, smart tariffs. Choose plans that incentivize charging overnight or during low demand periods. You save money and support the grid. Number four, urban planning and incentives. Governments and businesses should expand charging points in retail parking lots, educational institutions, hospitals, etc., where cars sit for hours. Number five, consumer awareness. Understand that an EV doesn't need to be refueled like a gasoline car. It's a paradigm shift. You charge while doing other things. Number six, vehicle to grid, V to G. Soon, if your car supports it, you can supply energy back to the grid during critical periods, earning discounts or even revenue. If there is one main message, it's to rethink the fill the tank mentality. With electric cars, gentle charging at opportune times is far more advantageous for your battery, your wallet, and the grid. Change requires investment, planning, and a cultural shift. But as people and businesses embrace these benefits, more efficient and sustainable EV usage models will emerge. So, what do you think? Had you ever considered that ultra-fast charging isn't always the best solution? Leave your comment below. We want to hear your opinion. Thank you for reading until the end. If you enjoyed this content, please like, is subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any videos about engineering, technology, and innovation. See you in the next video. Until then.